Okay, I think that I'm organized. And we're good? Yep, we're good. Perfect. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Yawa. We want to say, first of all and foremost, thank you for everybody for sending questions this week. It's absolutely fantastic that every week we're still getting blown up with all of the questions from all the people interested in hearing our answers. But I also wanted to mention, we do get a lot of repeated questions. So that means you should subscribe to our channel and check out the playlist that includes all of our previous, previous, previous Yawas. That's a word. That's a word. Got it. Spit it out there. Previous Yawas and watch them. Or guess what? If you don't have time to watch them, check them out on (laughs) um, our podcasts, wherever they're at. Where yeah, they? they're everywhere. Anywhere you everywhere. want to listen to a podcast, you uh, can pull up our yeah, Ethan so, and Cat, Standing Stone Kennels, Yawa. Yeah, so you can check those out and listen to them too and catch up on some of the great questions that we were able to answer in previous Yawas um, because we definitely want to be getting to new content and new answers for you guys so that we have as much information out there as possible. Absolutely. And the other side of it is we're going to change this around a little bit. As we continue to grow, things need to shift in order to continue to work properly. And instead of the weekly posts that we've been making, what we're asking you guys to do and new people to do is if you have questions for us, comment them in these videos, the Yawa videos. There will be three each week that come out. All you need to do is throw a comment in there with your question or any comments that you have, but we will sort through those and that's where we post them. We are not going to be posting a social post on Instagram or Facebook anymore. I think that it was adding some confusion because people were just expecting us to answer every single question that was getting asked. And unfortunately, we cannot do that. I mean, we get hundreds of questions and if you truly are, you know, trying to get a question answered and we aren't getting to it on a you know, weekly basis for these. You can definitely check us out on our online dog training community on Patreon as well, which is a great way to get questions answered or get feedback on training sessions if you um, need help with that as well. Absolutely. So I think that's a majority of the paperwork. We're going to mention that multiple times throughout this week so that we can hopefully have a seamless transition. In part three as well. Yeah. So everybody always wants to know I am again drinking whiskey. This wouldn't technically be bourbon. This is a rye. I don't drink a ton of rye, but this one is really, really tasty. It's a journey, journeyman distillery out of Michigan, and it is called Last Feather Rye, which is kind of cool. Feathers, birds. I or love bird dogs feathers. So. Yeah. I love feathers. This actually. is uh it's a really cool image. It would make a neat tattoo even. I mean, it's. I, I, I was actually thinking about that because I Where have can some, I put a feather tattoo? Another feather tattoo, but you know. <laughs> Um, so, uh, it's, it's, uh, as far as flavoring goes, I am going to be sipping it here for the next hour and trying to come up with things and I will just blurt them out as they come. Cause it's got an interesting blurt them out. I like it. Yeah. You'll be in the middle of a question and be like, ah, leather. I taste leather. No, I don't know. But um, the, the, the thing about it though, is it, uh, right off the top, you get a rye flavor, which is kind of a spicy type of, um, rye flavor. Anybody that's a rye whiskey drinker knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's spice. It's kind of spicy. So, um, but it's not overpowering. Some of them are so strong that it basically, you know, is too much. And this is not at all. And it has some other things that are very subtle, but there, and I'm trying to figure them out. So as we do, I will try and let them them out. Percolate on his palate. Yeah. Percolating. I think that's making coffee, isn't it? I don't know. But that was a gift from Lee, right? Yes, from absolutely. From our last training. Almost completely forgot yeah, that. He's Thank so excited you. about the whiskey. <laughs> it's good. Sometimes you get uh, guests. Wrapped I do up say in it's it. like, so no, sometimes you get some, and this is the same thing with me. I'll go buy a bottle of something, go, ooh, this looks like it could be. And then you go, all right, it's, uh, eh. um, this one's really, really good. So thank you, Lee. We uh, definitely appreciate it. We definitely appreciate you supporting us and- and thanks for coming out for our training seminar when we talked about and went over trained retrieve stuff. So. so thank you for the whiskey. Ching. Speaking of trained retrieve, I'm just going to throw this out there and then we'll get right into questions. Uh, if you guys do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow along with the videos we post pretty much daily, 
Uh, you'll see that we've just started a new trained retrieve, formal retrieving work series with Legend. Uh, this is really cool because some of the very first videos that we ever put out on YouTube back in the day. Back in the day, I was uh, shaggy haired and uh, you had sideburns down to here. No, oh, they stopped here at the chin line. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Um, now he has a mustache in all of these, but, um, so I must every, like, ask you a question. So like every 10 years, I think we're going to have to redo these trained retrieve series to see what facial hair feature Ethan <laughs> is, uh, modeling this decade. Yeah. But, uh, if you follow along, you'll be able to see legends progression, which like we said, it's kind of a redo of our previous trained retrieve series, which is almost 10 years old. And we learn new things. We have trained lots and lots and lots and lots more dogs in the last 10 years. So we've learned what has worked, what things we've added to our protocol. Um, so definitely check it out on our, we have playlists and this is uh, going to be a new playlist as well on that. So just thought I'd throw that out there while we were talking about it. Now let's get started with questions. I thought this was a good one, especially because we've got little questy pup here wandering around um, from Peter's. Itama or Peter Sitama. Ha, maybe that's it. On Instagram. Sorry if I butchered your Instagram tag, but around what age do y'all let your dog sleep out of their kennel and on their dog beds through the night? Thanks. It's a great question. And it 100% depends on the dog, but at the same time, um, I'm going to say on average, uh, over a year. Usually one year old is like that golden number, but it does depend on the dog. We've had some dogs that have been able to sleep out on their dog beds a little bit earlier than that, maybe like eight, nine months old. Um, and then some that needed a little bit more time as well, because they just were notoriously naughty about trying to find something to get into in the middle of the night. And I'm a pretty light sleeper, so I usually hear it and can, you know, put the kibosh on that. And but I am a pretty much not light sleeper, so no. I hear nothing other than... If she hits me long enough, I will eventually here hit the mic there. Sorry. I'll eventually wake up, but um, it does take a bit. But we definitely before that point have put a ton of emphasis on place training and collar conditioning to stay on the dog bed and things like that. So that when we use the cue kennel, if they are up wandering around, they know what that means and they know how to get back on the dog bed. And that's what we want them to do. Um, but it's more about maturity. Pepper. You taste pepper. Yeah. It's more about maturity and, you know, also good behaviors and not letting them get into naughty things because if they get away with it every night, they chew up something or get something. into the trash yeah. every single night. They're going to think, well, that's what I do every single night is I get an opportunity to go garbage diving or something. So um, if they're not ready for it, give them another month or two and then try again. Another recommendation for sleeping out overnight is definitely make sure that they've had an opportunity to burn off some energy throughout the day. So they're really ready to go to bed at night. Absolutely. So. Makes a big difference. Uh, uh, laid back, tired, not laid back, but tired, worn out dog. It's going to be much easier as far as that just laying down, going to sleep. So definitely the top end of this, you can taste the rye and some peppery, spicy kind of lots of that going on, which still, even though those flavors are there, it's not overpowering to the point where my tongue just goes... Okay. Well, so thanks far, for chiming not. in on your palate. Pepper. Just hit me. Just hit you. Oh, it just hit you. I thought you wanted me to just hit you. I'm like, I can do that. So next question, and this is a good one. And I think that this person actually even maybe messaged it on Instagram Messenger as well as put it over on. So we, we will still take a few requests that way. But the majority of them, we would love to come as comments on YouTube videos. Yes. So this is another good question though from Seth C. Shepard. Yeah. Seth C. Shepard. Thanks for all the great content you guys publish. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. 
I have a 14 week old Griffon. He's as sweet as can be. But when we introduced a bird to him, he runs away and growls when I try to take it from him, even after some praise. He does the same thing with a bone. Is there anything we can do to stop this behavior while he's young? So that's a really good question. And the fact that you're um, recognizing that he's kind of consistently do that, doing that with bones and birds, both um, high value rewards or um, items to him is important. Definitely, we wouldn't want to praise that behavior. And maybe I'm misunderstanding the way that you're talking about praising him. If he's got the bird or a dog bone, let's say, and he's kind of giving you growls and stuff, you don't want to be like, oh, good boy. It's okay. Good boy. Because you're just reinforcing that growling behavior. 100%. The, The retrieve of the bird, that's awesome. The growling over it and not wanting to give it up, not awesome. So we want to make sure that we're praising him for the retrieve and the good things he's doing, but not giving him any positive reinforcement for what he's doing that we don't want him to continue doing, which is growling about those things. I want to point out something specifically here because I've been hearing a ton of people send us stuff in regards to their young dogs, their puppies, their immature dogs that are growling and are aggressive and are these things are popping up. I want to point out one thing, and in this specific situation, if we seriously had an issue that wasn't fixable, all right, so you're, you're not too far gone. Definitely what's going on is not right, but it's fixable. If we were to have a dog that would pick up the bird and he would go lay down with it or something to that effect, right? And you walk up to him and he doesn't run away from you. He just lays there and says, don't touch my bird. That is a totally different situation than the dog that says and, and tries to run away with it. They're trying to keep it and they're using different mechanisms that they know, which is to run away or to maybe grumble or to maybe whatever to say, I really want this. Um, the dog that's just laying there that says, yeah, try it. I dare you. That dog has got a, a different uh, set of wires crossed there that says, you know, they don't understand the difference here. They they solely feel like they're in charge of the situation and that you can do whatever you want, but, you know, this is my bird and that's the end of it. Um, so understand that aspect of things that we are, we're definitely fixable. We just need to go about things correctly. And sometimes even um, play growl can be mistaken for aggressive growl. And Quest does it all the time with, um, yeah, she's she was, been doing especially it all day. within a pup, when she was a puppy with like, if she'd grab a towel or a rope toy, she'd like, kind of give that, you know, like grumbly, growly, like excited exchanges with us. She does it. She greets people that way and her tail's wagging and she's happy, but she key there. So reading body language is yes. going to be important. And for this specific question, and anytime anybody mentions, they feel like there's aggression or anything like that. That's where we say, Hey, shoot a video of what's going on, send it to us on Patreon so I can view it. Cause there's been times where I'm like, that's not aggressive. That's 100% puppy play. That's just interaction. And this is what you need to do to work through that, but it's not aggressive. So stop labeling it aggressive and don't feel apprehensive about it because you feel like it's aggressive. So that's very important. And a huge way that we can help you with this specific situation is through Patreon. It would be very helpful to actually see a video session of your bird introduction so that we can read what's going on a little bit more. Um, but it definitely doesn't sound like he's too far gone, but stopping the behavior, especially if it is more possessive and more resource guarding type of behavior would be something that we would recommend right away. Very faint amounts of vanilla. Okay. Um, so that was a really good question, Seth. I hope we were able to answer that for you uh, pretty well, but also reach out to us on Patreon. We'd love to see what's going on and help you a little bit more. Next question is from Kelvin M. Smith on Instagram. Having trouble keeping my dog focused on training for more than 30 minutes. Any tips? And this is something that I wanted to bring up because, first of all, we need more information. Second of, well, yeah. second of, because how old is your dog? Is, you know, it an eight week old puppy, a 30 minute session or amount of focus is not going to happen. I mean, I can keep Zephyr who's, he's sleeping over in a crate over here. I can keep his focus for like 10 minutes, maybe anything more than that. I'm losing focus. And, um, 
So age of your dog would be really relevant as well as what kind of training are you doing? Um, I hate to keep like harping on it, but we're doing that train or train series right now with legend and Ethan talks about it all the time. Uh, keep these sessions short. You know, every video coming out is like eight to 12 minutes long. They're really short and really succinct. And there's a two to three minute introduction to that too. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. they're, they're short sessions. So they're like 10 minute sessions and that's about what we want to keep them at. So it depends on what you're working on. Obviously, if you're going to the field and you're doing a field run and field session, you're probably going to be in the field for 30 minutes. Um, but if you're doing anything else, as far as like obedience, basics, introductory work, keeping their focus for longer than that isn't always, um, doable depending on their age and what you're doing. Uh, now we talk about healing or we talk about place training with duration. Once we've built the basics and the foundation, we can definitely expect, um, to increase that duration for longer and longer so that they can focus and stay on their dog bed for more than, you know, 30 seconds or 30 minutes would be a great amount of time for them to be able to stay there and maybe need a reminder here and there that you're still supposed to be on your bed. Or if you're going for a walk and healing your dog, your dog should potentially, once you've built up to that point, be able to heal for that amount of time without constant reminders and constant handling um, and kind of get into that groove of this is where I need to be. So going back to my first statement, we need more information. Yes, please. But I wanted to hit on it because definitely 30 minute training sessions really, um, keeping their focus for that long, depending on what you're doing is maybe a little bit of an unrealistic expectation. Again, depending on the situation, what you've got going on in the best place, it sounds kind of like a, a common theme here, this, this episode, but the best place to, to reach out to us on that would be patreon.com. I mean, almost every single day I am getting to those, those questions there. So yes. Last question, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yep. From Clay Dan on Instagram, kind of rhymes. Do you have your dogs wear vests while hunting? Good yeah. question. Yes, but specific vests for specific tasks. So I wanted to talk about this because we're, you know, in the middle of summer, it's really hot. And I would hate for people to be wearing, you know, neoprene vests on their dogs out running in the field right now or doing any water work in neoprene vests. Those are definitely something that need to be used for cold weather and cold water retrieves only. Yeah, think about the fact that even short-haired coat, um, short-haired dogs have a fur coat on, I mean, to an extent. And it's they're going to get hotter faster, especially throwing that extra vest on them when it's already hot because they're working hard and they don't, uh, a lot of them don't understand how to quit. So Right. And so we do, we use neoprene vests typically when we are waterfall hunting with the dogs. Um, there's a new vest out that we're really anxious to try. You saw it on, is it Momarsh's new vest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It, we have a couple of them coming. Yeah, so we ordered them. We haven't tried them. So uh, that's definitely something that we think we're going to do a video on, uh, you know, first impressions and a fit of this vest because it's supposed to be like a one size fits all, super adjustable, modified vest. Yeah, it um, looks really cool. Because what we've run into in the past with our neoprene vests that we use on our short hairs is they're very much made for labs, which are not built anywhere near short hairs because short hairs typically have really deep chests and then like itty bitty waists. Um, and those generic neoprene vests don't always fit and they're them less, right. they're less round where your labs got a little more bulk. M more of like shape, that round barrel shape, testing. Yep chested whereas Where your short hairs are really deep oblong. and long yeah and so they don't fit right and then they're restricting in the arms a lot of times or in that shoulder area so we're excited to try out this new neoprene vest um, from Omarsh and we are going to do a video on our first impressions and how the dogs fit with them and how they can maneuver with them and things like that but also I wanted to mention, we also use chest protectors, um, not necessarily vests, but chest protectors when it comes to hunting them in the field, especially depending on the type of cover. Um, our females, because they've had litters and have nursed before, typically have a little bit more enlarged teats. And we want to protect those from getting really tore up in the field. Um, but even some of our male dogs, which it depends on the type of cover, especially when I'm up in South Dakota, we hunt food plots or we hunt that, uh, that it's primarily food plots, Milo leaves, corn leaves, stubble, all of those things really tear them really up. Really abrasive. Um, where 
just grass around here. I won't typically wear a vest on them when we're hunting Kansas, just because the grass is not nearly as abrasive as some of those food plots. But and the other side like of it too, with those like chest protectors, which we've seen firsthand is they just give you that little bit extra level of protection for dogs that are hopping through fences. We've sure had then. dogs tear right through that, that chest protector and they didn't get a scratch on them. So definitely that can be an added bonus too, depending on where you're hunting. If you're hunting a lot of fence rows and things like that, that might be a good option for a little bit of extra protection from um, those barbed wire crossings. But the ones that we found that work the best are, they're called bird dog armor and they have bird dog armor two now, I believe, but it's a vest made by Lion Country Supply. And we do have it on our website under our recommended items. Um, we don't sell it, but we do really like it. We have used that vest for years. We've tried lots of other different chest protectors, skid plates, things like that. And the Lion Country Supply one really, A, fits our dogs well. It's pretty adjustable, as well as holds up um, to the type of cover and environment that our dogs are hunting in. Absolutely. So, Great questions. Really good questions this time. Thanks, guys, for watching. We're going to take a short break here, and we will be back with you for part two.